Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to continue our look at High Sierra Server, and what we're going to do is continue our look at network configurations. Now, in my previous screencast, I covered how to do the network configuration using an Apple router. So if you've got an Airport Extreme base station uh, that's running your network, that's connected to your server, uh, you may want to go back and take a look at that screencast because I cover in depth how to work with that uh, application and that router uh, to get things all set up and ready to go. Uh, but what I thought I'd do is do a screencast for those of you that have a non-Apple router so that you can take a look at some of the differences in what you'd need to do to set up your network configuration. And then we'll continue that too when we start to talk about what it looks like to do port forwarding and those sorts of things. So just wanted to give you that uh, difference there because I know a number of you now are not using using Apple routers, uh, including myself. I, right now I'm using an Eero uh, router system for a mesh network that's worked out really well for me. And so I'm going to use that to demonstrate it uh, and hopefully help you understand how to do your network configuration. So with that in mind, let me just go ahead and go over to my iOS device because that's where I manage that particular network piece and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are over on my iPhone, and this is the Eero application. Now again, depending on what router you have, you'll have a different interface. Many of the routers that you use today would use a web interface to help you get around and do your setup. Uh, in this case, this is the Eero homepage, and the Eero is managed through an iOS application. And so you can see there I've got three routers in play. I've got one in the loft, one in the dining room, and one in the family room, and this creates a mesh network for me. So like if I just tap on the loft, for instance, it tells me it's a wired connection, where it's located, tells me about the LED light, and it gives me the IP address of uh, that particular router. And you can see here I've got uh, point one here because usually point one is reserved for the router itself. And this is my main wired uh, router that's connected to uh, my modem uh, that's getting the internet signal. Okay, so that's how that works. Let me just uh, tap this to close. And I can do the same thing with the other two routers as well, that they're assigned IP addresses. And you can see this one happens to be wireless in my family room. And you can see it gives me signal strength and all of that. So just to give you an idea of how that works, and then this just forms a mesh uh, network. And if I tap the three arrows together, you see I get a list of all three of them with how they're connected. And then I can choose to add another one if I wanted to add uh, these base stations, uh, you know, just in case I don't have the right coverage or I need coverage in a specific area. Let me just tap that closed. Now across the top you can see I've got 35 uh, connected devices that are on there and if I just uh, tap into those connected devices you can see the different things that I have on my network and I can tap into these particular things as well like if I tap into this one and you'll see it'll show kind of where it's uh, connected uh, what what Eero it's connected to, whether it's idle or not. And it gives me a host name, IP address, and you can see I got a MAC address down there as well. And that MAC address is going to come in handy. So the first thing you want to do uh, here is find the uh, actual device that you want to use. And so if you scroll down, I've got all of these different things labeled. You can see I've got my uh, server information there and all kinds of things. And so if I just come into uh, this particular server area here, you can see there's a server, let's say, that I want to use. It's wired. You can see that it's actually functioning right now. And I can actually then add an assigned uh, IP address to this. Okay, So this is the one that I want to use that's called Mac Server. Let me just tap back. We're going to close this. So if I come over here to the menu in the upper left, I'm going to go into network settings. So if I just tap on network settings there, you can see this is the network settings page. Now at the top, I've got my wireless net network name and password. Uh, there's a security and privacy thing with an extra service they sell. But down below, you can see I've got my external IP address. I've got my internal IP address, which they call the gateway address. Uh, you can see there's the point one there. Uh, and my software and everything is up to date. And down below, you can see advanced settings. So I'm just going to tap on advanced settings and I go into this menu. And so, again, if you're on a website uh, version, you'll see an advanced settings area, or you will see these items or some facsimile of these items in your interface. You can see that I've got something for the internet connection uh, to show what the ISP is giving me, right? You can see the router IP uh, there, um, and that's external, as well as my address and subnet mask. I can also add a static IP if I wanted to, but I'm just going to tap out of this because I don't need to do that. You can see I've got DHCP and NAT, and I've got reservations and port forwarding, which I just tapped into. Now, in here is where I would set up my reservation. 
Now to do that, I would tap on add reservation down below. And then here I would use that same list I used before to scroll down and find the device that I want to create a reservation for. So, you know, if I just scroll down, you can see, I can pick whatever it is I want. I've got all my IP addresses there. Let's say I wanted this one. I could pick that one and I could set up an IP reservation for that particular IP address and just tap on save and it would save that address for me. You can see it gives me the Mac address and everything. Now, the nice thing about using a system like this is I don't have to remember the Mac addresses. It displays all the devices in front of me and allows me to choose which one I want to set up an IP reservation for. So let me just, uh, I'm just going to tap out of this because I already did that and go all the way back to where these uh, reservations are. And you can see I've got my server right there. Now, if I just tap uh, back for a second, um, what I'm going to do is I, I set up a reservation for my server. And in our case, we're using this particular server here. So you can see I've got a point uh, two. Uh, address that's set up for that. And you can see I've got port forwarding happening down below and I'll explain that a little bit more in our next screencast, but let me just tap out of there. So I've set up my uh, reservation and port forwarding. Now, one more thing I want to do if I just tap out of this is I just want to check my DNS to make sure my DNS is set up properly. And if I just go in here, you can see I can use my ISP defaults or I can set up a custom DNS and I would tap on custom DNS and you can see I put in there the server's uh, IP address. So I've got the primary server's IP right there because I want to add that. And you can see if I just tap in here, it lets me uh, correct it and set it up however I want. And so let me just go out of this and come back in and a secondary IP address. In this case, I've got open DNS, but you could set it up to be uh, Google servers, you know, 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 or whatever you want. And the importance of this is that the primary one says, look to this address first. And you'll notice that's my local IP for my server, which means it will try to resolve anything locally on the network first. If it can't find it, then it's going to go out to the internet to resolve things like web pages and things like that, that are not found on the server itself. So this just speeds it up a little bit to have it point to your uh, local server to look there first and then go to the internet. Uh, as far as performance, it's, it's about the same. You don't notice much of a difference at all, but it just is, is, is setting it up so that it looks to the server itself. Okay, so you want to put that in. Now, depending again on your device, you'll do that through a web interface where you can set your custom DNS with a primary and a secondary uh, DNS. You want to make sure that that secondary isn't another local address or your websites won't work. All of a sudden, your web service will be down because it doesn't have uh, all of those addresses on your server. They're out on the internet somewhere. So it's got to be uh, some kind of internet DNS provider, like I said, like Google or or in this case, it's open DNS, which allows me to filter my network a little bit more. So let me just tap out of that. So that shows you how to set those pieces up. Now, what you want to do is come in and check uh, the actual DNS on uh, your device itself. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If I just pull up uh, system preferences here, I want to go into network area. And in here, you can see I've got my DNS set up. It's picked up my router. It's picked up the IP address of this device and the subnet mask and all of that. Uh, but I want to fix the DNS servers to make them match. So if I just come into advanced, I could come into advanced and go to DNS. And in here, I can add anything that I want to add in here for my server so that it will pick everything up. So I could just come in here and hit the plus, and then I can add my DNS servers here. So uh, what we did with the Apple one is we had done a 10 point number, right? We had done 10.0, 0.1, 0.3. And I would put that in there as a search domain. And then I can leave Google in there and I can add open DNS as well. But then that way it matches on this machine. So this machine knows to look to the server first. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in the address for the server and show you what it looks like all filled out. Okay, so here we are. I've put my local IP address for my server in here and I put in open DNS for my DNS servers. And that's all I need to do. I would just say OK, and it's going to change that for me. You can see that my DNS server's changed right here. I need to click Apply for it to start working. Now, I can also come into Advanced here, and if I ever wanted to find the, um, the actual hardware address, the MAC address, it's right in here under Hardware. And you can see that would be the MAC address that I would copy and add over into my device, which would be the same address that you would see right there where it says MAC address right here on my Eero. So that's how you would set that up. Now, once I've done that, again, I just say, OK, you can see that that looks right. I just click on apply. And so now those DNS settings are locked in. And now my computer on my network is going to look to my server first for DNS. And then it's going to go to the web and use OpenDNS to uh, resolve any names to the numbers that are put in.
So that gives you an idea of how to set this up with an outside uh, router uh, that's not an Apple router. What I'm going to do is in the next screencast, I'm going to show you how to do port forwarding on both an Apple router and on a non-Apple router so that you get an idea of how to get those ports forwarded so that you can get your services access to the internet. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.